room where I keep my rats. I have, there's no door, so I have the opening blocked off with a baby gate. And obviously the spaces are too big, so I had to cover everything up. Um, you know, I figured they could climb wood pretty easily and that would be kind of expensive. So I just covered everything with cardboard and duct tape. And so far they haven't gotten through. Um, you know, obviously anytime you're trying to rat proof a room, it's going to be pretty custom to your space and the things that you're trying to protect. So, um, mine looks terrible. I put curtains from the ceiling so that at least when you walk in the front door, you don't see all that cardboard craziness. I have the TV blocked off with cardboard as well, held up with duct tape. Um, there's really nothing else in here that they can get into. There's only one cord that's visible. It's from their fan. And I just watch them. They're never, you know, free-ranging, unsupervised. So if they ever started to nibble on that cord, I would just put them away. They also have a, um, a filter. You could see it a minute ago. It was that tall silver thing. So it's got their HEPA air filtration. It's good for their respiration. And it keeps the room from smelling so ratty. <laughs> so this is the first cage. I got the white one at the bottom. It's just a small Katie cage. I got it when I got my first rat. And when she was little, that was enough space for her. But then later on, I went ahead and got the one that you see on top. Um, there's Chibs. And Juice is the white one with the red eyes. So I attached the two cages together. And I'll show you that in a little while. But um, I just put their bed up top and lots of fleece. <laughs> so lots of fleece. Um, <laughs> so this is right their bed. It's full of all these little just cut strips of blankets. And if you look under here though, you can see their tunnel and maybe she'll go, there she goes. So in there and she came out through that. So the way I made this was I had the two cages. So the one on top is actually a little hamster cage and it had the same plastic um, bit underneath and I just unclipped it from the cage portion and I set it on top of the white cage and then to get it to stay still I zip tied it in place so you can see here okay all the little zip ties and it doesn't move at all so at that point I had this black frame structure just right on top of the white bars and you know as you probably already know that's not the greatest for their feet so I wanted them to have a solid surface to be able to walk on so I just grabbed um, a piece of I guess it's like a sample linoleum tile at Home Depot probably like a dollar and set it in there um, and it's adhesive on the bottom, but I don't think that's how I have it stuck, right? Because I've made a whole little like collage thing under there, if you can see. So it's not stuck to the white cage, but I think it's so tight. Everything is just really tight, so it doesn't move. And the part that keeps it really in place is the fact that this hole is so tight. So my husband took a knife, like a utility knife, and he cut a circle the same size as that PVC pipe and just wedged it in there. So it's, I mean, there's no gap at all. It's completely secure. And for the underneath part, he used wire cutters to clip the bars enough to fit that through. So we pushed it up through the hole and then zip tied it in place. And I know some people's rats um, would probably chew through the zip ties. And in that case, you could try to use wire to hold it in place instead. Uh, if you look actually at our other tunnel over here, that's what we did here. So this is just wire and then it's twisted. And then the ends are, well actually that one's kind of sharp. I should fix that. But it's supposed to be folded in on itself so that nobody can get hurt. Um, so that's how we attach the two cages together. It was really simple and um, 
yeah, they like it. So it, you know, added a lot of space. And that was fine for both of them when they were small. On the inside of this cage here, this is kind of their playroom. So they have their potty, which is, um, I use bread pans for their little litter boxes. And I use the paper shavings. I just get them at Target. Um, but you could get them at the pet store also. And then this here was one of my children's toys. It was actually like a little playhouse for their dolls and whatnot. And you can see it has, here, let me turn on the light. It has little door and a little window. So there's a whole other little room back there. There's stairs here on the side. I mean, it's really cute and the rats can fit through those openings and they like to go in there and hide. That's where you put their food. The, um, since the bottom of this is plastic, I lined it with a big piece of fleece. It's kind of dirty right now. I need to probably change everything out. And, you know, I alter their toys, so I don't always leave it arranged the same way. But right now you can see there's ropes for them to climb on and different things for them to chew. So when I decided that that was not enough space anymore, we went ahead and added another whole cage to this thing here. So this is the Katie Rat Manor. And I ordered it off of Amazon and unfortunately it arrived really damaged. I had to, um, you know, fix it. So I thought about sending it back, <coughs> excuse me. But instead we just went to Home Depot and got these little aluminum plates and some wire. And the plates already had holes so it was easy to just put it where we want it and use the wire and twist it until it got really, really tight. And it just covers all the openings where the rats could possibly slip through and escape. So then after we had fixed all the broken bars in the cage, and there were quite a few, um, there's another plate you can see there on the door, we wanted to hook the two cages together. So we just, this one was a little easier actually. We just cut a hole in the side of both cages and kind of Put together these different pieces of PVC in the arrangement that that worked for us so you know like with anything that you kind of alter in your own home it's gonna fit your space and your needs so I mean for us we already had this table so it made sense to arrange everything like this but you know you wouldn't necessarily do it exactly the same but the idea of how to get it hooked up together would be exactly the same. So we got holes in the bars with the pliers again. And I use these plates here just for reinforcement because some of these bars can move. And actually I need to fix this. Like I said, it's a little sharp and that's not good. So the rats can go in the tunnel that way. And when they come out, they can either go straight and go into the shelf or they can make that turn and come down this black tunnel. And that tube actually goes all the way to here. So it empties out into this fleece tunnel here. And if I turn on the light, oh, well, that's really bright on the bars, but you can see the tunnel in there. And um, this little perch I actually got in the bird section of the pet shop. They have a lot of really cool stuff there for the rats. So here's Chips right here on the floor. I'm gonna see if I can <laughs> get her to run through the tunnel for you. Come on. Here, if I shut this. Okay, sorry my camera is like flying all over the place. Let's see, there she goes. Oh, she already got through, they're so fast. Anyway, so that's how we attached all the cages together.